police are brutalizing and harassing us for nothing because my love was coming in five minutes time. I begged the policeman. I said, I'm only waiting for a lift. I had a knee length dress on. He can't say that I look like a prostitution. I had a knee length dress on. I had a jersey on. He still took us. He, st he brutalized, nearly brutalized my arm. I was, I couldn't write. And I still got a mark on my leg there, it's proof. In the areas that you work in, do you find that they're safe apart from just police brutality? No, we've been even looking for somebody who had a case against the police because we are the sex workers, we call them service users. On our outreach, we went to look for her and they were very helpful to find out where she is and to tell us about her whereabouts. Also, being brutalized by police. Now the the Women's Legal Centre is busy with the case and it was a paralegal from the Women's Centre, Legal Centre, that we assisted in finding her. Now, okay, I understand all the legal issues with police brutality and stuff, but what about the people who feel that the sex industry is not good for families, it breaks down families, it, it's the cause of high divorce rates, it's the cause of STIs, HIV, teenage pregnancy. What's your message to those people? I am waiting for this chance. I think... So, even I even thought about it yesterday. How can religious people blame sex workers for their failed marriages? Um, if there's a problem in your marriage, try and sort it out. Because I also had a problem with my marriage, but it wasn't because of sex work. I had a failed marriage because of a, the violence against women and abuse from my husband. I don't think my marriage fails because of my husband had met sex workers. And secondly, if the, M the, the members of parliament are taking sex workers and that makes the people scared if we do go and lobby at parliament, one of the MPs told me, told us, me and my colleague, how can we decriminalize sex work when my friend and her, part, her husband was walking in the main road? Then sex workers pointed at him and say, you still owe me. That, are, that is one, some of the reasons why they are blaming sex workers for their failed marriages. We don't ask the husbands to come. We don't call, they don't call them or we don't call them. We don't ask them to come to us. They, they are having a choice. If their wives can't please them, they are taking the sex workers. So it is very, very wrong for people to blame their failed marriages on the sex workers. And that is the reason why they don't want to support decriminalization. But let's talk about the perception that people have. A lot of people feel that, you know, sex workers or prostitution gives people this idea of a different form of sex that is more pleasing than the sex that you can usually get from your partner. I mean, yes, okay. there is a difference because we, we do know what the clients want. The clients want, we, they pay for what they want. If they want, you to give a go, if they want you to give them a good time and they are paying for your time, that is what they are getting. So people can't say. Can I just add to that? Yes, it, it, it is very unfair to blame failed marriages on sex workers. For one, a sex worker is not looking to get married to that client. They're just looking for return business. So it's not even in the case of like a mistress where the mistress might be hoping one day that he divorces his wife and ends up with her. A sex worker is merely doing business. And you're right, the sex is different. Even if you speak to sex workers themselves, they'll tell you, when I'm with my intimate partner, I'm making love. But when I'm with a client, it's business, it's pure sex. So I really think that people should rather, like my colleague said, focus on the real issues that are affecting the marriage and, and causing them to get divorced or separated rather than blaming sex workers. I mean, we have sex workers who have clients who might find that the, that client's wife might be ill at the time or might be pregnant at the time and might not be able to satisfy him sexually. So then they would seek their services. So there are different scenarios in different cases. So not all interactions with a sex worker are meant to result in a divorce. Okay, let's speak about the issue of the high, the high rate of HIV. Do you think that you can then put a pin on sex workers to say that they are a contributing factor 
to that. Sex workers have been identified as one of the key populations with a high prevalence of HIV. That has been acknowledged by SANIC, uh, by World AIDS, so it is an, it's a fact. But how do we deal with that? Instead of confiscating condoms from sex workers or discouraging them from taking condoms at clinics, we should actually be, pro be providing them with them and providing them with safe environments for them to be able to practice safer sex. So really, if our concern is around HIV, we need to work with sex workers in order to deal with that.